All right, how's it going y'all? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up a reverse proxy with a Synology NAS using Nginx. So first off, what is a reverse proxy and why is it helpful to you? Basically, a reverse proxy allows you to have multiple services running on the same ports, on the same IP address, and be able to access them using different host names. All right, so what does that mean? Basically, it allows you to have multiple services running on the web ports, port 80 and port 443, all at your home's IP address. So let's say you've got two Synologies that you want to be able to connect to, Synology 1 and Synology 2. You can actually set up where it's synology1.synology.me brings you to first Synology. Then synology2.synology.me, when you put it that into your web address, will actually bring you to the second Synology. Users who have tried this before without really understanding ports have often run into the issue where no matter which one they type, Synology 1 or Synology 2, they always get brought to the first Synology. The reason is, when you type synology1.synology.me, you're not actually going to that physical box in your Synology. You're pointing to your router. And your router says, oh, I was told all web traffic go to Synology 1. But you can point all that web traffic to one Synology and then have that Synology point to the second Synology. I'll explain this all later. The second is security. It doesn't allow an adversary to just ping your IP address and see what's open. Instead, they actually have to go through your host name, which means you have a lot higher security. So I'm doing all of this in terms of a Synology security tutorial that should be out pretty soon. All right, so for this tutorial, we're gonna go over how to set up a reverse proxy and I've simplified it significantly here. Right now, basically the setup is the fact that I've got two NASes on my home network. I'm calling them NAS1 and NAS2. My goal is to be able to type nas1.spacerex.co, a domain I own, and have it point me to the first NAS. Then to also be able to type into my web browser nas2.spacerex.co to point to my second NAS. So the exact same thing can work if you've got two different Synology.me addresses. Let's call it nas1.synology.me and nas2.synology.me. The one thing to note, for extra security, it's not a bad idea to buy your own domain and use that instead of the synology.me address, as domains are really cheap. And if there's a known vulnerability with Synology, one adversary could simply go through and go through all the synology.me addresses, checking that vulnerability. And you don't want it to be that easy for somebody to break into your network like that. All right, so before this tutorial started, I set up two things. One, I've got nas1.spacerex.co and nas2.spacerex.co, both pointing to the IP address of my house using DDNS. And I've got a tutorial for how to do that using either Synology.me or using your own custom domain through Google. And I'll link both of those in the description below. The next thing I've done is I've requested SSL certificates using Let's Encrypt for both nas1.spacerex.co and nas2.spacerex.co. And I've also got a tutorial on how to set that up and I'll leave that in the description as well. All right, so once you've got that set up, it's incredibly easy and pre-built. So all you have to do is log into DSM and we're gonna start off by going into control panel. And then from control panel, we just go into this application portal. You may have to enable advanced mode if you don't see this option. From within application portal, simply go into reverse proxy. All right, and so this is Synology's built-in reverse proxy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by setting up both HTTP and HTTPS traffic pointing to the two different NASs. All right, and so on my network, I'm just gonna be opening up two different ports, port 80 for HTTP and port 443 for HTTPS. And then I'm gonna use the domain name that they came from to figure out where to send them. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click create to set up your first one. So we'll call this NAS1 HTTP because we're gonna to have to do this for the two different protocols we're gonna be using to connect to this NAS, both 443 and port 80. And so we're gonna select the protocol, it's either HTTP or HTTPS, since this is the HTTP. And now for hostname, you're going to enter the domain name that needs to lead to this. For this, this is nas1, 
spacerex.co. And we're gonna do port 80. And now we're going to enter the destination. We're also going to choose HTTP, and we can either do localhost or just the IP address of this NAS. And port 5000. And so the reason I chose port 5000 is port 5000 is the HTTP port that DSM uses. And so the way this is going to work is people are going to type in nas1.spacerex.co. And that is automatically going to ask for port 80 because it's automatically HTTP. Then my router is going to forward port 80 to this NAS. This NAS is then going to say, oh, they asked for nas1.spacerex.co. And is then going to go, okay, in that case, since they asked for nas1.spacerex.co on port 80, I'm going to send them to 10.0.1.41 using HTTP and port 5000. This way, it looks like it's coming from port 80, but it's really actually coming from port 5000 on my local NAS. All right, and so now we're going to do the same thing for NAS1 again, but using HTTPS. So now we're going to select HTTPS and enter the host name again. And for HTTPS, we're going to use port 443. For destination, once again, do the IP address, but this time adding in HTTPS and instead of port 443, Synology automatically opens up SSL on port 5001. All right, and so now that we've entered the information, the one thing we need to do is enable HSTS, which Synology needs to use for HTTPS when you're forwarding it. A lot of these end up being trial and error if you don't know a ton about the services, so you just need to figure out which of these work. There's really only two options, so it's not too bad. And then sometimes you will have to enter a custom header depending on the SSL setup for the device you're sending it to. There are tons of forums on there and you've just kind of got to go through and figure out what it needs and just click OK. So now what we need to do before testing this out is we actually need to go through and tell our certificate to use this. So we're going to go up to security, go to certificate, and we're going to say that for nas1.spacerex.co, we're going to configure it. And we're going to configure the service nas1.spacerex.co that we just set up. And we're going to tell it to use the Let's Encrypt NAS1 certificate. That way, it'll send the proper certificate back and we won't get a certificate error. All right, and so now we're ready to test this out. Though you need to do one more thing. You now need to forward the ports 80 and 443 from your router to the IP address of the NAS that is running the reverse proxy. So for me, I've already done that, which means my router will send any traffic requested on ports 80 or 443 to this reverse proxy NAS. All right, and so now let's go ahead and just type in nas1.spacerex.co into our browser. And just like that, we got brought in to NAS1. But now let's try HTTPS. That works too. And we know that we're encrypted because we've got this certificate mark. All right, perfect. One thing to note, unfortunately, there is no easy way to redirect all traffic to port 443. So you're going to have to type in HTTPS if you're using DSM. You can set up an automatic redirect using the web server, but that is going to be outside of the scope of this video. All right, so now we have NAS1 all set up. Now we just need to set up NAS2. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to set up HTTP first, and this time it's nas2.spacerex.co. And once again, port 80. And this time the host name is going to be 10.0.1.40 because that's the local IP address of the second NAS. And once again, the port is 5000. And one more time for HTTPS. All right, so now that we've set that up, what we need to do is we need to go back one more time to the certificates under security and change that certificate to use NAS2. 
So for NAS2, make sure to use the certificate for NAS2.spacerx.co. All right, and so now let's test that out. NAS2 brought me to Tank, which is my main server. And now let's try HTTPS. And just like that, it works. So this is a great and easy way to start running multiple protocols in the background of your NAS and increase security because they can't just start blasting out random IP addresses trying to get to your DSM. Instead, they need to know the host name. So you can start doing a ton of things with this and having additional web servers and a bunch of different stuff all hosted on your home network and will get automatically sorted out without having to type different ports but instead by just being able to type in different host names. All right, and so really that's all I've got for you. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and stay tuned for my security video and have a good one. Bye.